This is the infinite banking checklist that I'm about to share with you, which are a list of questions that you're going to want to ask the agent that you're working with. And then questions you're going to want to ask yourself. This is going to equip you to be more assertive, confident when you're in a meeting with an agent. One thing I want you to understand and comprehend from the perspective of the insurance agent, their job is to sell you this whole life insurance product or, or a series of products in their arsenal. So there's a sales approach. There's also a education approach. So a good agent is going to sell you a product, preferably a good one. And on top of that, they're going to educate you on their philosophy that they're going to give to you to hopefully implement. So they need to educate you on their philosophy, their way of being, their way of behaving with this concept, and they're going to sell you, right? So you, so when you come to the meeting, you need to know this so that you can prepare yourself to come to the table confident, ready, prepared, and you also want to be able to lead the conversation as the customer. And what's going to happen is there's going to be this healthy battle. I think it's a healthy battle. A conflicting battle is when there's arguments, but a healthy battle is when there's a, a nice dialogue, right? A very, very, very healthy dialogue, maybe in, maybe even some, some debate, but I want you as the customer to feel like you can come to the table equipped, prepared, ready, and also leading the conversation. Because you have to understand is the agent is also trying to lead the conversation to the sale, right? To close. It's important. You, this is your personal finances. These are your numbers. This is not a Mickey Mouse amount of money that we're putting into a life insurance policy. And even if it was a Mickey Mouse amount of money, it's still your money. So whether you're putting in 5,000 a year, 10,000 a year, 100,000 a year, a million a year, whatever it is, that's your money. Get educated, know the principles. Don't fool around with this. You're gonna have this for your whole entire life. Don't fool around. Let's have some good confidence. So now let me go ahead, share my screen here so that we can be on the same page. Infinite banking checklist. Let me zoom in a little bit. First couple of questions that you want to ask the agent just for you when you're in the conversation. And they'll probably start off with this anyway. But again, you want to lead the conversation when you get on that call and not lead where you take over the whole entire call because you might turn off the agent. And they just say, hey, uh, I don't think we're a good fit. So let me let me let me also clarify a couple things here. Let me just clarify a couple things. If you're working with any of the infinite banking players that I mentioned on that list, and then there's some within that, just know most of them don't need your business. So they're already in a pretty good position. They probably don't need your business. They don't want your headache. They don't want your complaints, right? They probably, they have no interest in working with people who are going to be combative, disruptive, conflicting, and just not you know, helpful, right? So when I say lead the conversation, don't lead in a way where you know more than everyone, right? Who, who wants to work with someone that knows everything, right? Or thinks they know everything and know nothing, right? Nobody wants to work with that kind of guy or gal, right? So let me just frame that. When, when I say lead, I want you to be confident, prepared, and ready to ask good questions to the agent. And if they don't have an answer to that question, more than likely they will say, okay, I'm going to go get the answer to that question, right? Because they want to help you succeed. They want to help themselves in closing that policy so they can get paid. But again, if you work with any of those players, they don't need your money in the first place, right? They're doing well. Questions for the agent. Have them explain their process to you in detail. So a great way when you hop on that first introductory call with the insurance agent, you can just say, Hey, before we get started, I want to thank you for your time in advance. And I want to just, you know, have you uh, explain to me your process in detail, just so that I'm on the same page with you, right? I don't want to get lost. So before we go into policy designs and rates of returns and guarantees and, and all the features of the policy itself, I want to get to know you and your process and your team in detail, just so that I can feel confident in working with you for the rest of my life, because that's what this product is. It's going to be with you for your whole life. Hence the title of the product is whole life insurance. It's with you for your whole life. So that really frames the conversation within that. 
you're going to be asking yourself, do I have chemistry with the agent? Am I in alignment with this agent based on what they're telling me? What do they believe in? For example, for example, let's say you're working with an agent that has no interest in real estate or no interest in investing in the stock market. And let's just say for however many years you've been living, you've been investing in real estate and investing in the stock market. And then that agent says, real estate's dumb. The stock market's a scam. It, it's, it's that you should just buy gold and silver and you know hope for the best. And you should, um, you should just have all your income go into infinite banking. Just, 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 just don't even deal with the, the stock market or any of that. You're already going to feel a little bit of tension. Like, wait a minute, is this even worth the next 45 minutes being on this call? So you get to immediately ask that second question. Wait, is this, wait, this guy doesn't believe in real estate investing and believes the stock market is a scam and it's, you know, this and that and whatever, right? That's their opinion. And you have yours, you have your financial strategy. So that gives you permission to say, Hey, you know what? Um, I just want to say thank you for your time. I don't, I don't think we're going to be a good fit. And then you talk to the next agent that you do research on, on social media, on YouTube, whatever it is. Then you talk to this agent and right off the bat, they're like, hey, real estate is number one for me. You got to have land. It's the first thing God gave man was land. It was the, the garden, land, real estate. Oh, oh phew, already in alignment with this guy. And then, hey, yep, stock market can be rigged. Here's how you can operate effectively, portion of your income. Here's some strategies I'm looking at. I use this one. I use this one. I follow Ray Dalio. I follow this guy. You know, I follow this guy, this guy, this guy. And those are the same people you follow. And you, maybe your portfolio looks like theirs. And boom, there's already chemistry. There's already alignment. That's that's really, really important. Because again, this is not someone you're doing business with for one week, one transaction. This is someone you're going to be with your whole entire life. The agent is likely the person in case you pass away that your spouse is going to call that person. It's going to call that agent. I just took it off the screen by accident. Okay. So do you have chemistry with the agent? All right. Ask that question. How does the agent handle objections and legitimate questions that you have? Hey, why does whole life make more sense than me putting my money in a bond or money market account or savings account, right? Uh, these are legitimate questions. These are your concerns. How are they answering those questions? Are they giving you legitimate, you know, historical data points? good answers that help you see things in a new light great if not that could be like one of your little red flags oh, you know i don't know this guy doesn't really like answer my questions they beat around the bush they give me a weird analogy about grocery stores and then they're talking about you know family bank again and how the banks are evil and all that like i don't know just answer my dang question answer my dang question right so that's important. All right, next question. Will the agent take the time to hear your problems and concerns? Or are they going to talk past you towards the sell of infinite banking and not address your problems and concerns? Because if they don't address your problems and concerns, they will come up when you have the policy in place and you're funding it and something goes wrong, you're going to have buyer's remorse. You don't want buyer's remorse because then you're going to find yourself canceling the policy or maybe the policy is going to lapse because you didn't fully understand the product in the first place because the agent didn't do a good job answering your problems and concerns. That's important, all right? Next question, does the agent plan on being in the business for their whole career? I think this is important to know, all right? Is this just a stepping stone for them? Okay, if that's the case, you know, you can still work with them. Let's say you wanna help them. You know, let's say you're uh, you know, a real life example here. Let's say, hold on, let me come back. Boom, boom, boom. Let's say you're working with a, um, an 18 year old, uh, a 19 year old, 20 year old, a, a young guy, brand new in the industry, and they don't know much yet, but they have a team that's helping them. And you were a lead. You went into a funnel system. Boom. You're now on a call with Henry. Henry's 18, 19 years old, brand new in the industry, no experience, doesn't even have a policy themselves. And you ask this question, Hey, Henry, do you plan on being in the industry for your whole career? Henry says, no. I'm actually in college. This is my part-time sales gig so that I can start my own construction company one day. And you're like, okay, who's your manager? Who's your, your leader? J you know, I'll still work with you. I want to help you out, get, you know, help you get through college. That commission is going to help you pay for college. Great. I want to see you be successful and start that construction company. But I also want to know who your upline is, who your manager is, just so I can get a relationship with them. Once you leave the industry, I want to know 
who do I contact? Who, who, who do I talk to? If Henry's gone, that was my agent. Who do I talk to now? Right? That's important for you to understand as the customer. So you want to ask that question. Do they plan on being in the industry uh, their whole entire life? Right? Very, very, very important. Good. So let's come back to the screen here. Last question. In case they leave the industry, who do you contact next? So that just kind of leads into that, right? So, okay, if you don't plan on being in this industry for your whole career, who can I contact to provide support on the policy or policies that you'll have in place, right? That's important. I have had many interactions with clients. Some of you are in the room here, right? And comment, let me know if this is true. Many of you are in the room here where you had an agent, they left the industry, can't get a hold of them no more, don't know where they are, don't have their number, like you don't even know what's going on right and then you came to me and now your client providing that support helping you out with that with that policy or policies right comment below if you're one of those people also hit the like button if you've been in here for the last 50 minutes there's 27 likes 76 people watching let's get that number up to 76 for me would really 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 appreciate that cool so with that being said let's come back right framework you guys like this framework so those are the questions for the agent now for you, this is important. Before you even start a policy, before you even look at illustrations, before you even look at rate of return and dividends and, and positive arbitrage and loan interest rates, and, and, and before you look at any of that stuff, ask yourself this, am I thinking long-term or short-term? If I'm thinking long-term, that's going to influence how the policy is designed when I talk to the agent. If I'm thinking short-term, which just simply means that you're funding the policy for a shorter period of time. If you're going to fund a policy for a short period of time, say seven years, say 10 years, that is going to influence how the policy is designed. Very, very important. What you don't want is to be thinking short term and then you get a policy designed for the long term and then vice versa. Get a policy that's designed for the long term, but you were thinking short term. Buyer's remorse can sink in later on. All right. So that's important. Next question for yourself. How much cash flow do you have per year? What is your minimum number? you can pay in per year with your eyes closed, right? That minimum number should be a percentage of what you save per year from your cash flow, right? That's your base, your baseline, right? How much cash flow do you have per year? What is your minimum number, percentage number that you're saving that you can pay into the policy per year with your eyes closed? Then what is the desired max amount you want to pay in per year? So you'll have a minimum number and then you'll have a max number. How long? Do you want a max fund? How long do you want to pay? And based on how long you say, will determine if that policy should be designed for the long term or for the short term. Finally, what is the strategy once the policy is fully funded? And what is the strategy while you are funding the policy? So you plan on funding a policy for a short period of time. You probably don't want a high base premium. If you're only going to fund your policy for seven years, 10 years, 14 years, right? That's a short period of time. Then you probably don't want a high base premium, high cost of insurance. Why? Because you're only thinking short term. You're only thinking, what's the most amount of money I can put into this policy? What's the most amount of cash value I can have up front and use today to go do something with, right? That is short term thinking. That is how I was thinking with my two first policies that I designed for myself, right? I was thinking, minimum base premium, max cash value for my short funded policies that I have, right? Oh, really just one of them is short funded, okay? The other one is long, but it's a small amount. 